Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have the impossible target of uh, objective, rather, of uh, telling you everything I can tell you on this subject in the following 15 minutes. А самой стратегии очень коротко, ну мы все знаем, что совсем недавно 29. All Russians certainly know that a low carbon social economic development strategy for the Russian Federation until 2050 was adopted recently on the 29th of October. And under the base scenario, our GEG emissions will be cut by 60% compared to the level of 2019 and 80% compared to 1990. And this way, Russia will reach carbon neutrality by 2060. And this strategy also provides for various activities uh, towards decarbonization, including, for example, maintenance and increase of uh, carbon absorption capacity or carbon sink capacity of uh, Russian forests. You know, it's actually calling for growth from 535 to 1200 million, I guess, tons of CO2 equivalent. Now, let me remind you that Russian forests account for 20% of global forest coverage. The total floor area of Russian forests exceeds 1 billion hectares. And actually, Russian forest cover is the highest in the world at 45% of its territory. All this is true. However, lots of bad things are happening to Russian forests. Now, for example, you can see here the evolution of Russian forest cover. So we're seeing 2000 data here in a light green. So we see, for example, shown in dark green, the hardwoods or, you know, dark coniferous forests. And now they are changing. They are actually changing to broadleaf species. And we also have newly emergent forests on a territory of roughly 30 million hectares. And this is usually deserted agricultural land. Now, at the same time, we also have, uh, you know, um, illegal felling. We also have lots of fires. We have uh, forest losses due to deterioration of air quality and so on and so forth. Forestry in Russia. And uh, usually in Russia, we are using a different term. We say forestry, but we actually use it as an umbrella term for forestry as such, as well as pulp and paper or forest related manufacturing. So there are three areas we should actually look into in terms of GG emission potential. Now, obviously, there are fires, and many of them are anthropogenic in terms of the nature and fires have been catastrophic. Over 10 million hectares of forests have been destroyed by forest fires over the past several years. The situation there is pretty bad, actually. So we certainly need to step up our game in terms of protecting forests against fires as well as against pests and insects. Most importantly, we need to prevent fires because prevention is better than cure. You know, it actually costs significantly less and it protects much better. You know, as rangers often say, if you haven't dosed the fire with a glass of water, chances are you will need so much more. And naturally, we need to expand our monitoring system and uh, uh, remote sensing technologies also need to be employed given the sheer size of the country. Now, artificial reforestation has some, you know, natural limitations again, given the amount of forests that we have. 
And uh, again, let me stress that the uh, biggest issues we have with forests are in fact anthropogenic in nature. What we can also do, we can do reforestation and afforestation, and this will help us, particularly if we go for the right spaces, to increase carbon sink capacity. And we can also develop the bio industry related to forests and actually replace carbon intensive products with the products of a lower carbon intensity. Now, shown here are the capabilities for remote sensing, and this is the kind of study that we conduct jointly with our partners from Space Research Institute of RAS. So here we are showing the forest patches that have been destroyed by forests, I'm sorry, by fires, and they're shown in red. And over here we are showing total area, I guess, in uh, millions of hectares, that's right, destroyed by fires. And uh, the, the brown curve there represents not just the forest destroyed by fire, but also hurt by fires and slowly dying because of fires. So thanks to remote sensing technologies, we are able to notice things earlier and hopefully react faster. Now, as regards reforestation and afforestation, we do have opportunities here. Until recently, artificial reforestation has involved reforestation with pines and fir trees. However, if we need forests, not just for timber, and, you know, fun, funnily enough, you know, we are treating forests as if they were only needed for production of timber, although they do have lots of other functions, such as climate regulation. And actually, recent estimates are showing we can make so much more money if we reorient our forestry activities, which we haven't been doing so far. So restoration of forests or reforestation with the so-called precious species such as pines and fir trees costs a lot and makes pretty little sense right now. What we are seeing right uh, now a lot in Russia is that uh, we have lots of monodominant forests where there is a single species which is dominant. This is not what we need. We need polydominant forests because with polydominant forests, you can actually get all the functions that you need. You get both the timber and you get climate regulation and you get much better absorption of uh, GAGs. Compare it to monodominant forests, which we have a lot across the territory of the Russian Federation. So we need to restore forests at a level which is analogous to what uh, occurs naturally. The next one is afforestation. That's planting forests where well, we had none before. Well, right now, we are seeing deforestation at an average speed of 1.1 million hectares per year. This needs to be reverted. And we have capabilities for that. Some of them are very easy to tap. There are lots of deserted agricultural lands, and we have uh, this emerging forest on a territory of like 30 million hectares. And the current position of the government is that it should be destroyed, which uh, is obviously the wrong way about it. And we need instead to increase their productivity. This way we'll get timber. This way we will also use them as carbon sinks, and they will also play an important regulatory function. So given so much land, we can actually do this. We're actually planning a number of projects now where we're going to hopefully illustrate how it can be done properly. Also in deserted arable land or agricultural lands, 
we can actually do a forestation. It's not that, you know, this uh, new new growth has uh, not really sprouted, popped up everywhere. And we can actually plant forests there, and we can also plant uh, uh, greens and weeds there, which can be used for a cattle grazing. This is a brief overview of an experiment we ran around transformation of monodominant into polydominant forest. So in 1989 and 97, a forestry experiment was started, and I think it was a monodominant uh, birch wood, but then we planted maple trees and oaks and fir trees and what we're seeing now is lots of the so-called parcellas see they are mixed although some of these uh, patches are monodominant and they have just firs or only oaks they're also mixed growth patches i guess you've all seen those uh, deserted lands this is a very bad in terms of feasibility use of this lands and if we do proper afforestation or reforestation, I'm sorry, afforestation there, that will be great. Now, what you're seeing here is, uh, um, you know, some of the fellings in natural forests, although we can actually create proper plantations, which are good for felling purposes as well as carbon sequestration. It's a shame we don't have enough plantations, although we have the technology for that, we have institutes that could oversee it. Actually, in a plantation, you can produce lots and lots of saplings. This is what uh, these plantations can look like. Now, in territories where forests appear spontaneously, biotechnologies can be used in order to minimize usage of uh, pesticides so germ-based technologies or bacterial technologies can actually be used in order to increase or improve the quality of soil and thus forests will actually absorb more greenhouse gases however we need to change the legislation in order to change the situation there have been two presidential instructions to address it, but since then, uh, nothing has really changed. You know, we are still seeing lots of illegal felling and no real plantation activity. However, you know, there are some not pathways, but there are conditions for us to get serious about it. Do I have more time? Okay, right. We can, uh, we can actually use uh, forestry biomass in a cascade manner. And we actually ran this uh, project together with AFI, European Forestry Institute. It was actually called Rufer Klim. Well, we consider this aspect of uh, the bioeconomy. So I should probably mention here uh, by energy, bioplastics, and wooden household constru house, uh, construction and home building. Actually, we have everything required to develop this kind of construction. And if we do that, you know, we can actually build like 183 million square meters per year. Now, you may remember that in Soviet times, this country was a global leader in terms of uh, viscose and cellulose production, which is a shame. Like, we are leaders no more, but it's a, it's a growing market. Actually, textile are made out of timber are getting very big. Compare it, for example, to cotton, which require lots of pesticides and thus consume a lot of water. Actually, had we been doing it, you know, we would have been able to save like 65 million tons of CO2 emissions. Biodegradable packaging should probably go without saying, but there is also forestry, a forest chemistry. For example, we can use uh, lignine of a high purity 
would say, which is a precursor to vanilline and benzene and toluene and xylene. Bioenergy. A lot has been said already about the energy sector. And here again, we have capabilities. We have the potential, but very little is happening. The actual production volumes are very low. 1.6 to 1.9 million tons of pellets and 0.3 million tons of briquettes. Actually, some Russian companies have actually proposed various technologies for turning uh, timber byproducts into charcoal. So we need to develop and implement various technologies for uh, monitoring and protecting forests against fire and also cascade use of forest biomass.